Hello and welcome back to another video and today we are here for a last of first challenge on MotoGP 21 at the Austrian Grand Prix playing as Jorge Martin. So I think this is actually the first challenge I've done on MotoGP 21 so it's definitely long overdue and to be honest the main reason for that is I've not had the pace of the MotoGP AI at most circuits. Um, I'm not 100% sure about this one, my pace doesn't seem too bad but I don't think we're going to be troubling the scorers because it's only a 25% uh, race so I don't think we'll be troubling the front guys. We could probably try and get in the points, maybe the top 10, but uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get into the top positions. But you never know. You never know with this game. There can be some crazy things. Bike retrieval is enabled. And as far as I know, the AI have longer respawn times because of that. So if the AI have any crashes, they should lose a lot of time. Same with myself, of course, as well. But hopefully I won't crash because, of course, there's just not enough laps to actually make up that time. So if I crash, I'm pretty much out of the race. But of course, we need to have a look at the tyres first. So I'm actually being recommended soft tyres on the front and mediums on the rear. I think I'm going to just stick with medium, medium. I don't think putting a soft tyre on the front is a very good idea. And I need to put on the biggest disc that there is as well, because of course it is Austria. And as we know, the brake discs overheat massively at this circuit. So I'm going to go for the high disc at the high mass 340 carbon disc. And then that should be that should be it. So that's the only tweaks I'm running. But without any further ado then, let's get this challenge started. It is going to be super, super tough because, of course, we are running 120% AI, as I always do in all my videos. So they are going to put up a bit of a fight here. But waiting for the lights to go out here then. Lights out and away we go. We've had a good start compared to Marini, Savadori and Bastianini on the row in front. In fact, we've had an amazing start. So we go down towards the first corner, breaking nice and late on the outside. We've got Laquona just in front of us. He comes over on us a little bit through the first corner. Then we've had a bit of contact with Nakagami from behind. So we're up to 15th place already. It's been a pretty decent start. Brad Binder just in front of us, side by side with Laquona up the hill. See if we can pick any more off on the run up towards turn three. The bike is hop, skipping and jumping. We're all over the curb. We've got a trail of his warning. We've got into the side of Polis Bagro. So that was completely unintentional, but fortunately we didn't gain anything. Well, we have now gained a position on pole because we've kind of bashed him again. So, uh, yeah, not the cleanest of starts. Well, the start was pretty clean, but turn three was not. We absolutely destroyed Polis Bagra's race there, let's be honest. So as we go through turn four, then we've got Brad Binder right in front of us, trying to get the power compared to the South African. Can we try and make a pass at the inside? It's probably going to be quite difficult to do on a Ducati, to be honest, through this section of track. Although he actually has gone a bit wide. If we can get the power nice and early, we might be able to get on the inside. Not quite. Uh, I think him and Laquona have actually been held up a little bit by Morbidelli on the Patronus Yamaha in front. And I've messed that up again. So we picked up another Trailer Miss Warning. So it's two Trailer Miss Warnings in one lap. And there's seven laps in this race. So uh, we've got to be very squeaky clean for the rest of the race. It's a shame there's not the mechanic in the game that it lets you get away with it on the first couple of corners like in real life but at the last corner then we got a good run compared to Brad Bender up into Bama 3 once again can we try and get him on the run down towards turn 1 with this Ducati power there we go around the outside of Binder he's still got the inside though as we go into turn 1 Binder takes 13th place back off me but I get a really good exit compared to him again back up to Bama 3 side by side with Brad Binder now we're up into 13th place so we finally got past him can we try and make another pass into turn 3 as well no, we're not quite close enough to Laquona to be able to pull that one off. It was going to be a bit optimistic if I was to try that. Binder tried to get back up the inside to return three, though, and I had a really good turn three, really good exit compared to Laquona. This time, the move might be a bit more on, on the run into four if we can try and break a little bit later than I can. No, actually, the AI, to be fair, to, to, to their credit, actually breaks pretty late through that corner. So on the power again, it is going to be difficult to pick off riders, but I need to try and start passing them at a bit more of a rate than one a lap because... We're not going to get too far if we stay at this at this rate. So through the final turn, them all over the back of the corner. Not quite at the exit compared to him, though. It's not quite like we did to Brad Binder over the line in 24-9. I know I can go a bit quicker than that. Around the outside of the corner. We're on the outside of Morbidelli as well into the first corner. We've actually got it on the corner before we get to the apex this time, although we had a little bit of contact, which definitely unsettled me. The corner's coming back at us once again. So we had a faster turn one overall. But the exit was completely ruined by Laquona. This time, though, we should get him through turn two into turn three. Yes, we do. He's still trying to get back around the outside, though. So we've got to be careful of Laquona. And we've messed up turn three massively on the curb there. Up to Palmer three, just to make sure he doesn't blast back past me. Because we cannot afford to lose any more time behind Ike Laquona. Because we need to try and make some positions up. So here we are, then, at the end of the third lap. We're almost up to half half race distance already then, so we've completed three laps of seven, so 
we've really got to get a move on here, especially if I want to get into this top 10, because there's a couple of riders in front of us before we do that. We've got to pass more Bedelli and Aleish to get up into the top 10. And at this rate, not going to quite manage that. There we go then, through turn two. We're closing up on Morbidelli on the brakes, though, into turn three. We've got past him, hopefully. He shouldn't be able to get back on the inside. He hasn't managed to do so, so we've actually got past Morbidelli there. So we've dispatched one on this lap. Can we try and get a leash as well down towards turn four? Because that would be fantastic to actually pass two riders on one lap. And we're closing up on Mark Marquez as well. But around the outside we go, then our Valacia Spagaro. Are we going to manage it? A bit of contact with Aleish, to be fair. I was squeezing him, so that was completely my fault. But Aleish hangs on for now. But he's so close to Mark that I think we're probably going to have to pass them as a pair. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to cost too much time to try and pass them individually. Although, they're both a little wide here. Can we try and do something? You see, my fastest lap is good four tenths quicker than it has been so far. So, it's definitely been my best lap of the race. But until this point, we're looking for a move all over the back of a leash. This track is so short, the laps seem to just finish immediately. Because we've almost been battling with these guys for a lap. Almost an entire lap I've been battling with these two. And here we go then, through the penultimate turn, we finally picked off Alasia Spagro. So up into the top ten, and hopefully we can try and get Mark out of here as well. So Mark S on the Honda, he's got amazing straight line speed. Can we try and do him around the outside into the first corner? We're not going to be able to pull off the pass there, and he's moved across. I'll be quite a bit so through the first corner, then clipping the curb. That was absolutely horrendous. We're going to be vulnerable now to Alasia up the hill, because we're trying to pass Mark. And that really, really costs a lot of time. You can see I'm actually very marginal on the fuel now as well. But here we go. Round the outside to turn two. On the brakes to turn three. We've got that pass done. We're up into P9 for now. But I've ran pretty wide. That allows Mark straight back through. So we're having a really good battle here with Marquez. But it's definitely uh, cost me any chance of catching up to Alex Rins. But on the brakes into four. Surely we've got it this time. We should be able to outbreak him into here. But the front is really, really protesting actually. We've got it, we've got it. I thought he was going to cut back underneath. We have got it. 1.3 seconds now to Alex Rins. Well, honestly, I can't see that coming down. So I think it is going to be 10th, uh, uh, sorry, 9th at best. Uh, but it could still be 10th because Marquez is looking feisty in a leash once he gets past Mark. Well, if he manages to get past Mark, he might be a bit of a problem as well. Oh, there's been a crash behind. Oh, it looks like it's been a pretty major one, actually. But it's involved Marquez and Espagaro. I think they've collected a couple other riders as well. Meanwhile, though, we are actually making good inroads on Alex Rins. You can see I'm on course for a new personal best lap. If we can do the rest of this lap cleanly and then have a really good next lap, we could maybe actually have a look at uh, passing Rins. It's a shame, actually, that I haven't done a longer race because I think I probably could have fought my way up to the podium. I couldn't win the race because Quattarari, you can see, look at his pace, is a lot better than mine, and he's absolutely gone away at the front as well. But I've definitely got stronger as the race has gone on. I've got more used to the bike and the track. Uh, so I think once we get to this class and career mode, we shouldn't be too bad. I was actually uh, kind of thinking that we might struggle a bit in career mode in this class. We've got another Trellimus warning, so we've got two more to go. But to be honest, we picked up the first two on the first lap. So uh, as long as we have a better lap than that on the next one, we should be good. But actually, speaking of the pace, I've just done the fastest lap of the race. And now we're all over the back of Rins, Vinales and Oliveira. So all of a sudden... Sixth place could be on the cards here if we have a really good final lap. But it's going to have to be aggressive, that's for sure. But uh, it's good to see that we've got the pace with that fastest lap. But here we are then, breaking four turns. We're closing up here on Alex Rins. We're up the inside of Rins. We tip it into turn three. We've got the position on Rins. So we're up. Oh, no, actually, he's back around the outside again. Probably should use a little bit of power three out of that corner. But we hopefully can have an attack down towards turn four, around the outside of Alex Rins. Here we go. I think I've got this a little bit out of shape. We're closing up to the back of Vinales. We've managed to stay on the bike. We've stayed in front of Rins as well. We're all over the back of Maverick. Now, can we try and get past Maverick? Oliveira's holding them both up a lot. That's what the issue is. And here we go on the inside. Oh, we've cr oh no. We've clattered into Miguel Oliveira. And down we go from hero to zero in an instant. That was... Uh, yeah, I suppose that was never really on, was it? But... Oh, that's frustrating because we oh, we could have got that sixth place there because I'd, I'd got alongside him. I'd got enough alongside to maybe do this. And in fact, we could still get points if I don't get black flagged here for riding backwards. Oliveira's got back on the track in front of me. But we're still 24 sec. Well, we're not now, but we're still in front of Enea Bastianini because the AI respawn times are now matched to the uh, the bike bike retrieval, which is really, really nice. So I'm actually going to turn bike retrieval back on in career mode from now on. I'll just run onto the grass. But I'll tell you what, 13th place with a crash is not too bad, considering it's a bike retrieval crash as well. 
just disappointing, disappointing to not quite manage to get that position on Oliveira, although uh, Bastianini is all over the back of me, he could drag me to the line here, but I think we are just going to hang on, but yeah, oh, disappointing last lap, but I had to go for it. So then Quattararo in the end won by 1.4 seconds. If I'd started further at the front, I probably could have gone with him, it seems, at the end. Uh, at the start, of course, they had better pace. Although well, Aleish apparently got fastest up 24-0, managed to actually uh, steal it away from me right at the end. Although that's probably uh, the AI simulation glitch because, of course, uh, it's just those AI that finished behind me. So the, those are the only ones that could get it. But honestly... That penultimate lap is a very, very good lap, I'm not going to lie to you, so it's uh, it's unfortunate. I didn't think we were going to get anywhere near Rins, but all of a sudden we started gaining on him a lot, and I saw that he was being held up by Oliveira, because he, he wasn't that much slower, because he lost like over a second of the lap, he was only a few tenths slower, it was just that Oliveira's tyres had gone, and he was uh, holding Vinales and uh, Rins up, so... That's why we caught him up so easily. Although Oliveira still hung on to 12th. He finished quite a few seconds in front, I guess, because he didn't actually have to run and get his bike. He just had to wait an allotted time, which is kind of estimated to be about a bike retrieval. But there were a couple of high-profile incidents in that race, of course. Uh, the first one really being with Marquez and Aleish behind. Uh, I want to see what happened there and see who got caught up in that. And then we'll have a look at my really botched pass on Oliveira. I just, because it was the last lap, I was so desperate to try and get past both of them at once, and I saw Oliveira going slow, but uh, yeah, I, I just went to the side of him, I completely misjudged it. So on board with Aleish now, and it's actually a really weird crash, if I just let you watch and see what happens. It's just two separate incidents, but they both took the same lines, so they had the exact same high side, and that's why so many riders were caught up in it, because it's the typical MotoGP21 thing, where bike crashes but doesn't slide, Although, I will give them credit, in this case, the way they crashed, it probably wouldn't slide very far and would stay on the track. But this is probably the only time I've seen it where it's fair, because most of the time the bike will just stop dead where it, where you crash effectively. But this time it's such a slow corner, yeah, it's not going to slide away. But you can see they both just tip it in. Aleish is slightly tighter than Mark, but you can see they both just sort of lose the rear as they get on the power, which does happen if you take that corner too tightly. Anyone that's uh, ever done that will tell you that. And we'll see who actually got collected in it. I think maybe Binder got caught up in it. So, oh, Morbidelli was lucky. Well, actually, he got hit by Marquez's bike, but somehow stayed on. Uh, Binder, yeah, he just clipped Aleish's bike. Laquona just barged his out of the way. Polisbagger got caught up in it. Of course, Bastianini. That's why Bastianini was behind us. Uh, it looks like Valentino got caught up in it as well. Yep, there he is. If we switch on board with Valentina, you can kind of see all the carnage happening in front of them. This is like one area where the AI genuinely are a little bit strange. Because in reality, if this was a player, you most likely would probably sit up at this point now to try and avoid this accident. But the AI just barrel around the corner. Oh, Laquona was lucky. We need to have a proper in-depth look at Laquona. I'm not going to go in-depth at every single rider like I have done in the past. But because Laquona's uh, circumstances seem so... Extraordinary. And we need to have a look at but Look, so many bikes on the floor, and then obviously Savadori got involved as well. Uh, let's have a look at that. Yep, so through the corner we go. Uh, Petrucci got took out. You can see Alex Marquez. He looks like he got took out as well. Uh, Bastianini's bike is in the floor, you can see there. But yep, Savadori just got clipped. What about Alex Marquez? Alex Marquez stayed on apparently. Let's have a look at what happened to him then. So. He's got Petrucci at the inside, he runs through his brother and then the other reps are Honda and somehow miraculously stays on from this. Although, I guess it's a bit buggy because for some reason the Avinti is actually in the ground. So I'm not quite sure what that's about, but a big stoppy there for Alex Marquez. And he actually got away with that one, so that's pretty lucky. And I'm guessing it's a similar kind of thing that happens to Laquona. So slowing it down with Laquona, you see the initial accident happen. And yeah, oh, Laquona does a huge stoppy yet and just sort of gets away with it, so... Fair play to Laquona, <laughs> a very, very lucky boy. But if we move on from that incident now and look at the one that I caused myself, one with Miguel Oliveira, yeah, that one's a bit embarrassing. So here we are then, on board with myself, and obviously we've seen it in full speed already, and you, I could see at this point, pretty much, that I was probably going to hit him, but it was too late, I'd pulled out and released the brake, and... Yeah, you can see I rammed on the brake a lot harder here because I realised I was going to hit him, but it, it was too late. The only chance I really had was to try and sit the bike up and just force him a little bit out of the way, but once the rear starts to skip on this game, you're going to crash. So, yeah, it was a pretty basic crash, honestly. It was just up the inside. 
just lost the rear and just completely went to the side of him. Quite a typical Mercury 20 wanting to happen. Uh, we've got some interesting um, physics with the ragdoll going on there. But yeah, it was a little bit of a silly move from myself. But you know what? It's a last the first challenge. You've got to give it a go, haven't you? It doesn't mean anything for points. And honestly, this race is filled with a lot of confidence. It shows me that I actually can run the pace at AI. So expect to see some more challenges soon, that's for sure. But that's pretty much all I've got to say then. So I hope you guys did enjoy that one. The return of challenges here to MotoGP21. I'll be trying to do some more. I'm going to just try and upload a bit more consistently. Especially the MotoGP stuff. Because I know a lot of you don't seem to be too interested in the uh, the Formula 1 uh, co-op series. That'll st that's still going to continue until uh, the end of the season. But I want to try and get some more MotoGP content out there. Because I know you guys really do enjoy that. And with my uni year pretty much being done. Just a few days left. I should be able to upload a bit more consistently for a few weeks. Before I have to go back again. So uh, hopefully you guys look forward to that. But like I said, I hope you guys did enjoy that one. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe. And I shall see you in the next one.